where they strung up a man, who they say he murdered three. Strange things have happened there. No stranger would it be if we met at midnight in the hanging tree. Welcome to the show. I am your host, Chris James. What was it they kept saying in Twin Peaks? Oh, yeah. They must have been drinking organic man coffee. Except the show came out long before Julio and Marta were somehow blessed by creating the best coffee in the universe. 4501 McPherson, for those of you here in Laredo, or if you have a flying car, or a portal to this town. OrganicManCoffeeTrike.shop for the rest of y'all. Yep, that is one good cup of coffee. Working all hours of the day, and sometimes several days in a row without a break, we would wind up talking about all kinds of things. Anyone working with me would wind up talking about UFOs, ghosts, cryptids, that sort of thing. Anyone working with me would also wind up thinking I was probably crazy. We would also go into things heard on Coast to Coast or any paranormal show. One thing that came up was one of the guys telling me about finding a staircase in the middle of nowhere. He was out hunting up in northeast Texas, out in the woods, and he had found what looked like a set of steps going down into the ground. They were made of old concrete, and the wooden forms that they had used to pour the steps had left uneven lines permanently embedded in the sides. The steps were about three feet across, and the sides were six inches thick. Moss had grown, making everything of varying shades of green. The stairs went down into the ground, maybe eight or ten feet. There was nothing but dirt at the bottom. Standing at the top, looking down, you would have seen just dirt slowly falling down to the bottom. These stairs must have been very old, maybe 50 or 80 years. Yet, the opening was still mostly passable. The agent telling the story said he stood there looking at these stairs, wondering why they were so far from any road. Had somebody built a house big enough to have a large underground structure, there had to have been some way to get to the house and bring the materials to the site. Some way to come and go. He was there to bag a deer, not to look at old houses, but then he noticed there was nothing left of an old house. Even a pier and beam home will show some remains of a structure. Some of the building materials should have been there. Having cement stairs, the foundation should have been poured and not just set in the dirt. Having his curiosity picked, he walked around where there should have been some evidence of a building to go along with the basement. He said it was odd, and then he went looking for something worth shooting at. This had been well over 40 years ago, and when he passed his experience on to me, it must have been about 20 years ago. At the time, it was just a very weird story. With time, I heard more accounts of unexplained stairs found in bizarre locations. I did a quick search on Vic Hermanson's list of paranormal subjects, and sure enough, he includes stairs in the woods as one of the subjects for Paranormal Rundown. Over the years, there have been many tales about mysterious uh uh, mysteries, uh, sorry about that. Over the years, there have been many tales about mysteries centering on United States national parks as well as state parks. 
people go missing in these parks with some regularity. David Politis talks about this in Missing 411. There have also been countless tales of cryptids and alien beings being spotted. There have been tales of spontaneous human combustion in national parks. Stories about hikers coming across mysterious sets of stairs add to the foreboding atmosphere of these national landmarks. Hikers have run into weird things while exploring state and national parks. Some are mundane objects that have otherworldly feelings to them. A full set of stairs placed in the forest and leading up to the sky might not be all that odd until you look closer. People describe these staircases as looking like someone had cut a staircase off of a building, picked it up, carried it out into the woods, and set it back down. There's never any evidence of other structures nearby, just a set of stairs leading to nowhere. Some report seeing staircases that seem to have been placed on the ground upside down. The staircases are made from every construction material known. Wood, brick, concrete, steel, even composite materials. The stairs look in varying conditions. On a few occasions, the wood looks nearly new. Had a building been there long enough for the main structure to rot away, the stairs being exposed to the elements should have been the first part to go. Even painted steel will begin to rust away as soon as a breach in the f is found in the paint. The people finding these stairs have found just the stringers or runners, with all the treads or steps and the risers missing. Not just a few, but all of the parts you needed to get from the ground to the next level. The beams holding the stairs up are sometimes just sitting on the dirt. Place a 2x4 in the dirt and put any weight on it, and the 2x4 will sink into the ground. People have said that the stairs sometimes look as if they were built to adorn some mansion. Others look like the person building them quit after only putting up the basic structure. When you see a runner, you think stairs. The types of stairs are varied as the people finding them. Spiral stairs, straight up and down stairs, doubling back stairs, curved ornate stairs. The workmanship is also varied. Some stairs are utilitarian, as if put in place just to serve a simple purpose. Others look as if the person doing the work spent years getting every cut just right. There are carvings decorating some of the stairs. A lot of the folks reporting these stairs to nowhere say that there is no dirt or leaf clutter on them. Plus, the animals all avoid going anywhere near them. No sign of animals walking within several yards. Birds will land on any kind of an elevated object. Plus, they will go to the bathroom. People say there is no bird poo on the stairs. One thing that has been told on many reports is there being an old cemetery within seeing distance. Sometimes it might be just a couple small grave markers. Other times it's an entire graveyard. The markers looked as if they'd been there for years, if not centuries. Most of the reports of out-of-the-place stairs are found in the United States, but there are some coming in from around the world. Uh, sometimes they look brand new, and sometimes they look as if they're close to ruin. Some go straight up, and others spiral. Some have railings, and others don't. Those who have discovered the staircases sometimes report seeing them covered in carpet. The carpet is always clean, as if it was just swept or just vacuumed. What is truly eerie is that these steps are generally free of all dirt or debris, and they show no evidence of activity from animals. 
Uh, those who have seen these staircases state that it's almost as if the stairs exist in a bubble that protects them from everything around. I worked as a carpenter for a few years. To build stairs, you need substantial supplies. The runners have to be strong enough to not just support the structure, but anybody using them. A 2 by 12 16 feet long, weighs about 80 pounds. You'll need at least two. You need something to hold the stairs up, and this has to be structurally sound, not just one or two 2 by 4s Then there's the treads and the risers. If you want to close off the gap between the steps. My dad was a bricklayer, and he went where the work was. For many years, we lived in Wisconsin. Madison was growing, and that's where we wound up. The one-bedroom house we lived in had a basement. The stairs going down didn't have risers, so there was a gap between each step. We watched a lot of horror movies, and in a few, uh, something would reach out and grab the ankle of the victim going down the stairs. For unknown reasons, the, the bathroom was in the basement. The only light was at the top, which cast shadows all the way down. This made going to the ba uh, bathroom in the middle of the night more of an adventure than it should have been. That was like about 50 years ago. The long and the short of building stairs is it takes a lot of heavy materials. All of those Nowhere stairs are miles from the nearest road. The naysayers all claim these staircases are being built by hoaxers. Uh, most hoaxers want their creations to be found. Plus, they don't want to spend several hundred dollars on something that no one may ever see. Some of these stairways to nowhere must have cost thousands. The knee-jerk reaction from most people is, this whole thing is just the result of a creepypasta story. Creepypasta was created in 2007. The story I heard was sometime around the 80s. This is right up there with folks thinking the Titanic was just a movie made by James Cameron. What I find scary and fascinating is, they are out there. Folks who haven't a clue about the real world. Maybe it's too much fluoride in their diets. The people that want to pretend there is nothing paranormal going to extreme measures to explain away things, wouldn't it be a lot less trouble to examine the stories and figure out what's really happening? I guess if you're scared of unexplained things, your best course of action would be to hide under the bed and say, there are no unexplained things. I don't have a problem with skeptics. I do have a problem for the folks who ignore any and all evidence so that their neat little world can stay intact. The sightings of stairs in the woods are written off as being lies, fiction, or simply abandoned houses where everything rotted or was carted away, leaving just the stairs behind. If you ever go looking at old buildings, I mean real old buildings, you'll usually see the fireplace and the foundation. The wooden parts will be long gone. Old houses built years ago had the stairs inside to protect them from the elements. Those who tell the stories of encounters with these staircases all describe them as being unnervingly out of place in natural landscape where they are found. People who have found out-of-the-place staircases have also said they felt a chill or maybe an overpowering sense of dread while looking at the structure. The out-of-place item is quickly avoided. The person finding it has a sudden need to be elsewhere. One thing I didn't find many people telling about were folks saying that they walked to the top of the stairs to see what might be up there. This could be because few people were willing to climb, or 
the ones who did, never were able to make it back. Animals and some people know when it's time to put distance between them, selves, and mysterious things. There were a few brave, foolhardy souls, or maybe they were just the writers telling the stories, where the subject was fascinated enough to go it to, to give it a go. In one report, an SNR member, a search and rescue, uh, found a set of stairs covered in white carpet. The carpet was clean, as if recently vacuumed. The wood was dark, and there was no dirt or leaves anywhere on the treads. Being an SNR isn't the kind of thing that most squeamish folks will do. I've done my time in search and rescue. There are a lot of type A personalities. These people would compete to try to find the missing person. It would be more like a race to the victim than a well-organized look-under-every-brush kind of thing. However, there are a few accounts of brave souls, foolhardy souls, who walked to the top of the stairs. The SNR member looked at these white-carpeted stairs, and he decided, What can possibly go wrong? Now, this is a common thing with the guys I used to hang out with. He stepped up onto the first step. When nothing happened, he took the next, followed by the next, and then several immediately after. Once at the very top, he said the air felt heavy, as if the pressure had increased dramatically. He noticed the wood around him had become deathly quiet. This all became too much, and he turned and quickly walked back down. He probably ran, but he said he walked. Getting back to his team, the inquisitive SNR member was asked where he had been. He said, just checking out the area, over there. The team leader looked around, and seeing the stairs, he asked, Did you climb those things? The SNR member was hesitant to say yes, but he finally did. The team leader said that the missing hiker was nowhere to be found, and just maybe those stairs had something to do with it. SNR is kind of like the military or law enforcement. They don't talk about weird things officially. What is seen or found in the woods that doesn't fit into a nice, neat report gets left out. No one wants to be known as that guy who sees things that aren't possibly real. The folks in the rear with the gear that never get their boots dirty decide what is real and what is imagination. In another report of someone being too brave for their own good, the inquisitive hiker walked to the top of the stairs without anything odd happening. It's just a set of stairs. Once at the top, he saw dark shadowy figures in the trees around him. These beings had no features to mention other than their huge, round, black eyes. He turned and rushed down the stairs and ran back the way he'd come. Once back at camp, he discovered that he had been gone for several hours, thinking he'd only been gone for a few minutes. The theory of these being just remnants of long, torn-down houses will be heard hard-pressed to explain away. The person finding these out-of-place stairs can never seem to be able to find them again. Even following GPS, the backtrack will take them through the woods, yet the staircase is never there. With many people trying to explain away these out-of-the-place items, the idea of Satanists just has to come up. Worshippers in the night haul all the materials out to the woods to put up a pulpit for their leader to mount at the designated time and preach his words of satanic wisdom. I've never attended one of these rituals. I wouldn't go if I was invited. There are some things I don't do. I don't play with a Ouija board. I don't whistle in the woods. I 
don't bring cursed objects into my home, and I don't hang out with folks who just might think of me as being a sacrifice instead of a guest. The idea of these staircases possibly being used to assess a portal has come up on many occasions. If you've watched The Secrets of Skinwalker Ranch, you'll be familiar with that weird thing in the sky above the triangle. If you don't watch the show, uh, there's a weird thing in the sky above the triangle. <laughs> what more can I say? The weird thing is invisible, yet it has interfered with many experiments. An exploding rocket illuminated something during one nighttime launch. The unknown object is about 35 feet in the air and invisible. How would folks without all the cool toys Travis Taylor gets to play with find a portal? You can use a dowsing rod or a pendulum. I like using pendulums because I know how to use them and I have several. You start out by holding the pendulum out and asking, show me yes, followed by show me no. Some pendulums will swing in a semicircle, while others will swing around or back and forth. Each one is different. With your pendulum held in front of you, slowly walk the area of the suspected portal. You might suspect there's a portal because of stories from others. You have to hold the pendulum steady. Technique isn't as important as a steady hand. You do have to think about finding a portal. You can even ask once in a while, where is the portal or the gateway? Yes, you can talk to a pendulum. I think this might work with dowsing rods as well. Uh, stop from time to time to steady your hand. If your arm is getting tired, you can switch hands. It doesn't matter which one you use. When you get closer to the portal, the pendulum will begin to act up. You can ask if the portal is near and the pendulum should give you a yes or no. Raise the pendulum up over your head and see if it swings faster. The closer you get, the faster the swing. If the portal is high overhead, this might necessitate building a staircase to assess it. Now, do you really want to get close to a portal, seeing as you don't know where it might lead? Portals are either an entry or an exit point to the physical world from the spirit world, or possibly a doorway to another dimension. You can ask the pendulum which kind of portal you're not looking at, since it's invisible. One site says in order to figure out what kind of portal you're near, you hold the pendulum and you watch to see which way it swings. A clockwise circle tells you you have found a portal that allows spirits to enter the physical world. If it goes in a counterclockwise circle, you have found a portal that serves as an exit point for the spirits to leave the physical plane and return to their own world. This is assuming you have a pendulum that works the same as every other pendulum. And the energy from the portal is not interfering with your readings. Some believe these staircases are gateways to another dimension, or maybe even to hell itself. Warning! If you have found a doorway to hell, do not open it. We have enough craziness in the world already without having a Ghostbusters event on our hands. One psychic says she has physically explored several of these staircases. She said there is a clear energy shift near the staircases and getting close to them causes her emotions to become numb. These staircases are used for alien abductions, she said. The stairs serve as portals so that aliens can take their victims away without all the need for a flying saucer that might attract unwanted attention. This is why these staircases are so often spotted by search and rescue personnel looking for missing people. Why stairs? I asked myself this as I was working up my show notes. 
I kind of understand bridges and a crossroad. They have been legend for millennium. Stairs are a means to get from one floor to the next, or maybe from one level to the next. How many ancient structures have massive staircases as a major part of their design? Bridges, crossroads, and staircases have some really bizarre stories and legends. I can kind of understand bridges being places of mystery. The underside is usually dark and overgrown. Things can hide down there. As for crossroads, this legend has been around for centuries. You can meet the devil at the crossroads. Stairs do have some place in history when it comes to the paranormal. The old Bloody Mary game used to take place walking backwards down the stairs. See, kids have always been thrill seekers and not the brightest individuals. In Viterbo, Italy, the Etruscan pyramid of Bomarzo is a large stone monolith with stairs that lead to a small platform at the top. Archaeologists think this edifice is from 700 B.C. The accepted theory is the Etruscans were big on sky-based divination and sacrifice, both animal and human. The idea being, get as high in the sky as you can so the gods don't have to bend over. The altar was discovered in 1990, and it is believed to have been built in the 6th century. It can be visited near the Park of Monsters in Barmazzo, Italy. The park was originally named the Sacro Bosco, or the Sacred Grove, but the sculptures are bizarre creatures that most folks say are monsters, and thus the name. What's even weirder about them is that narrow sacrificial gutters run down parallel with the steps. The blood of sacrificial animals or humans at the top of the altar used to flow down to the base of the stairs in holes destined to feed either the spirits of nature or the gods of the underworld. In the Cambodian Siem Rep province, a 2,000-foot-long staircase ascends the Phnom Kulin Mountain. Known as Plus Ser, some folks believe the structure dates to sometime in the 9th or the 13th century. No one knows who built these stairs or why. Some say this is served as a pathway to reach to the ancients who had passed on years ago, or perhaps to reach the old ones, the old gods that we don't want in our world today. Uh, just to make sure that nobody thinks there could be any kind of paranormal reason, experts have come forward to say the stairs were built so that workers could ex assess building materials to be used in the city. The city hasn't been found yet, and most people building things used what was easily accessible. Why climb a mountain when there were plenty of huge rocks down at the base? Plus, if the stairs were to assess building material, how did the workers get them back down? The stairs would have been crushed, rolling huge boulders down from above. Many of the pyramids in Mexico have stairs on all four sides. This sounds like a lot of extra work if the stairs were meant to get to the top and not for some other reason. The following stories are what I found while searching for out-of-the-place stairways. I have no way of determining if these are just stories or factual accounts. Most naysayers yell and scream that it's all fiction. A paranormal folks say that these are real. You get to decide for yourself. The Staircase of Missing Time is located in the Philippines. A park ranger named Torkik was looking for missing hikers when he stumbled upon a set of elaborate stone stairs leading up the side of a mountain. There was nothing at the top that would necessitate such a staircase. The ranger did check out the stairs, thinking the missing people might have followed them. 
Once Tertik had finished, the ranger continued his search only to find a second stone staircase. There were elaborate carvings along the short wall that served as the side. The missing hikers were never found. When he had exhausted himself and could see no reason to continue, Turkik returned to his base, where he was somewhat astonished to discover he'd been away for five years. He said that he'd only been out for a few days. Weird things must have happened once he clomb those stairs. The CDC was established to July 1st, 1946. Their job was to look into incommunicable diseases and advise the president on a course of action. 1947, just after the Roswell crash, several workers were sent out to look into the cattle mutilations being discovered in New Mexico. The field teams questioned anyone in around the area where cattle had been found in what could be described as a non-consensual death event. <laughs> I just had to throw that out there. Okay, cattle mutilations. Uh, Jasper Ford used that term in Red Side Story. Non-consensual death event. I'll have to use it again someday. It's right up there with women of negotiable affections. The folks interviewing sometimes told the CDC team about finding weird staircases in the middle of nowhere. These reports said the stairs were emitting some kind of a sound along with vibrations. The CDC folks set up their camp near one of these stairways. In the morning, they discovered the stairs had moved during the night. On the ground where the stairs had been was a burnt area. Each night, the team would bed down, and each morning, the stairs would be farther away, moving dozens of feet without waking anyone. The team wanted a sample of the wood to figure out what might be going on. They tried to break off some of the wood, but found they couldn't. They tried using a saw, followed by a drill. The wood was harder than anything they had ever seen. The next night, the team tried keeping an eye on the stairs all night long, but as the sun was coming up the next morning, the stairs were gone. In Sweden, a couple of guys were hiking in the woods. Axel and Isak. They followed the trails for most of their hike until they strayed into the thick woods. In the middle of nowhere, which is where bad things happen, they found a set of stairs. The structure was wood and not all that impressive until considering who had built them and why. The nearest road was miles away and there was no sign of any building for the stairs to belong to. <clears throat> Being made of wood, had the building rotted away, the stairs would have dissolved as well. Isak wanted to climb up and see what might be seen from the top, but Axel said this was a bad idea. Right about here, had they been at a bar, Isak would have said, Hold my beer! Isak made his way up the stairs as Axel stood below watching. Nothing bad happened, and Isak made it to the very last step, when an ear-shattering scream came from all around them. It was as if the sound was being produced right in front of them, as if the sound was coming from the stairs. Isak bounded down the stairs and took off running well behind Axel, who hadn't bothered to wait for his adventurous partner. The two ran as fast as they could, followed by walking quickly, until their bodies decided it was time to stop or pass out. Uh, bent over, gasping for breath, Axel felt a hand grasp his shoulder and squeeze. He thought it was just his companion. Looking over, he found Isak was several feet away from him, also doubled over, trying to breathe. The hand had felt cold and as hard as a rock. 
Neither of the two could come up with what had caused the scream or what had grabbed his shoulder. They decided to keep their hikes on other trails from then on. A park ranger here in the States was field training a new boot. They walked out into the brush and did all the things a park ranger might be expected to do so the new guy would know next time. Uh, during a rest stop, the older ranger told the new guy about a ranger who had found a set of stairs in the woods. The ranger clombed the top to see what was available from up there. A tree limb swung by and somehow cut his hand off. Uh, this was unexpected. Well, nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. The ranger grabbed the stump and he staggered down the stairs. His companions came to his aid. They bandaged the stump and they looked for the hand. It was gone, as if something had run off with the now missing part. No one could find it or any blood anywhere on the ground. The wounded ranger was taken back to base and transported to the hospital, now minus one hand. We used to have folks sneaking into the country using the train coming north. Too many of these folks had no idea how to board or to get down from a moving train. Accidents were common. Parts wound up no longer attached. If agents could find the missing bits, they might be reunited with their former host. Picking up body parts along the tracks. Such fun. You had to find the part to get them sewn back on. However, crush injuries were usually not fixable. But we did try. Another park ranger reported seeing a woman climbing a set of stairs in the woods. She looked determined to get to the top no matter what. Once at the top, it looked like she was having some distress. She kind of stumbled back down the stairs, saying that she felt very odd. The woman collapsed at the bottom, necessitating an ambulance ride to the hospital where she died. It turned out she'd had an aneurysm. She'd had no signs or symptoms until the stair event. A new park ranger spotted a set of stairs in the thickest part of the woods. He asked his training officer about them and was told, don't go near them. He asked a few other rangers, and they all told him, never go near any stairs in the woods. Located in the secluded area of Dogtown Common, near Gloucester, Massachusetts, stands a staircase that seemingly needs leads to nothing but wilderness. The staircase is considered mysterious due to its isolated location, absence of any visible structure, and eerie legends associated with Dogtown, which includes stories of witchcraft and the supernatural occurrences. In the Santa Cruz Mountains of California, there have been several reports of random staircases appearing in the middle of dense forests. These staircases are mysterious because they are found far from any trails or signs of human habitation, once more having no answers to who built them or why. In the Mark Twain National Forest of Missouri, there is a legend about a set of stairs hidden deep within the woods that are said to be salvaged from the wreckage of the RMS Tartanic. Tartanic? Titanic. What's a Tartanic? Boy, making up words again. The RMS Titanic. Uh, this would have been an unimaginably difficult salvage. The Titanic sits 13,000 feet below the surface. To salvage the stairs would have required a submersible to cut a huge hole through either the side or the top of the ship and then haul the stairs to the surface. That is, unless the stairs, being made of wood, simply floated out of some huge opening caused as the ship went down. How and why the stairs wound up in a national forest, that is a real thinker. 
Somebody must have found a set of very elaborate wooden stairs in the woods and thought they looked too much like the staircase from the Titanic. A few folks have said that they've seen these stairs, but nobody can find the spot a second time. If somehow a portal is involved, why would there have been one on board a ship at sea? Of course, we don't know why portals exist or how they come to be located in places all over our planet. This could be the creation of a new TV show. Portals at Sea. I doubt I'd watch it. A hiker in West Virginia found a set of stairs while about 20 miles into the woods. The stairs were well built and he didn't move when he tried shaking them. He was tempted to try climbing, but he was worried being so far from anyone. If something went south, well, he would be in deep trouble. Another hiker found stairs while an hour east of Ironwood, Michigan. He and his cousin were hiking and came to a clearing with several sets of stairs, all leading nowhere. They looked around, but they found no sign of any houses, ever having been in the area, just the stairs. The weirdest part of this encounter was the stairs had nothing holding them up. They simply hung in the air like how a rock doesn't. The ground around each staircase was devoid of grass, and there was no litter on the steps. One set of stairs was found in the middle of a lake. A family was out boating, and they rounded a bend in the river. Okay, it was in a river, not in a lake. Uh, there, near the shore, was a set of stairs coming up about three or four feet. A man from Germany managed to take a few photographs of the staircase he had found. They sat in the middle of the woods, well away from any roads or even trails. The stairs were made from metal, and they had a handrail along one side. Moss was growing all over them, but they looked to be in good shape. Several sets of stairs have been found in Portugal. Nothing odd to them, other than there's no reason to have stairs in an area never developed by anyone. These were old-growth forests, and nobody had ever lived in the area. A young man in Norway also encountered some out-of-the-place stairs while on a hike with his family. He saw the staircase far from any road or trail. As he got closer, the feeling of overpowering fear overcame him. He said it was as if the entire area around the staircase was evil or dangerous, or probably both. He hightailed it out of there. A couple of kids near Detroit were running around in the wooded area outside of the city. As they worked their way through some very thick brush, they came upon a set of old stone or masonry stairs. Brush had grown up right along the sides, and it hung over the steps, making them nearly completely hidden. Figuring these must be something at the top, they followed the stairs up along the side of the steep hill. At the, as they neared the top, the view was unimpressive, but to their side was another set of stairs leading up. They followed these, wondering what might be found at the end. They came out in a bit of a clearing surrounded by thick brush and trees. There was no sign of any kind of a building or landing or anything that the stairs were leading to. They could see old-growth trees and bushes and nothing else. Looking around, they spotted someone, or something, looking at them from a gap in the trees. It was a low spot where the ground had sunk down into a deeper hole. The creature had dark skin. Its head was kind of an oblong shape, and the eyes were much bigger than a human's, and they were solid black. The creature ducked down into the hole. Worried there might be more than just this one, the adventurers took off running back down the stairs. This encounter reminded me of the SNR member who had ventured to the top of the stairs while looking for the lost hiker. He had also seen creatures with large, round, black eyes. 
Some witnesses say that upon approaching the stairs, they feel a strange energy or they've heard unusual sounds nearby. Others have shared accounts of feeling being watched or experiencing an overwhelming sense of fear. Sights and sounds that make no sense and could not be explained away. Uh, speaking of stairs to nowhere, I have to add the Winchester Mystery House. Mrs. Winchester served as her own architect. Each night she would retreat to her seance room and receive instructions from the spirit world on constructing her home. Then next morning she presented her construction workers with hand-drawn sketches of what was to be done. The crew might spend a month constructing a room only to be ordered to destroy it the next month. Because Miss Winchester paid very well, uh, nobody had any problem with her weirdness. Mrs. Winchester had inherited $20 million, uh, giving her a daily income of about a thousand that she spent on her house. Uh, that would be around $20,000 today. In her designs were stairs that led up to the ceiling. Stairs to nowhere. Why would she have her workers do such a thing? The short answer I come up with was uh, she wasn't playing with a full deck. Her elevator didn't reach the top floor. Some people think that these weird constructions were designed to confuse the evil spirits that were haunting Mrs. Winchester. Or maybe the stairs to nowhere had some otherworldly purpose. Since Mrs. Winchester was in constant contact with the spirits, could something from another dimension have slipped in a few suggestions on putting in a staircase to a portal for only their use? I didn't find any stair stories anywhere in Russia, but then again, the reports might not be available yet. If you live in Russia and you know of any of these reports, yeah, I've got listeners in Russia, uh, send me a, an email or a text or whatever, and, and just let me know if y'all have these things over there or not. Being a difficult thing to build if you don't know what you're doing, and in such locations, who would be able to do such a thing? A lot of folks say this is some kind of a government project. These staircases have been built to gain access to secret facilities. This could be true of the stairs going down, but how about the stairs that lead up to nowhere? The government is well known for building bizarre things only to abandon them shortly after their use has been outgrown or they've discovered to be unwanted. Then again, stairs going up might have been put there as some kind of an experiment. Put the stairs in the woods and wait to see who finds them and what they do once found. Why would anybody want to study such a thing? The same reason somebody working on a government grant wanted to see what Tusco the Elephant would do if given a massive dose of LSD. The short answer is, he died. The government would also need access to other countries, but that has happened in the past. Money gets handed out to other countries by the folks in Washington all the time. They just love giving our money to others. They get all up in arms any time we ask for some of our money back to buy things like food or medicine. Uh, trying to figure out some government project is like trying to figure out why one of my cats is always going to the bathroom in the sink. There's a sink in the den where I have my office and my studio, and once in a while it has poo in it. Who's doing it? I don't know. Why they're doing it? Don't know. I've asked. I've asked each one individually, and they all just look at me like I'm the crazy one. Some college professor working on some government project will say, what will happen if, followed by a request being sent up the line. 
somebody in Congress will eventually read the thing and think it sounds like a good idea, especially since the money isn't coming out of his pocket. The project gets approved and millions of dollars start moving from one account to another. Equipment gets ordered and things get built. The people doing the ordering and the building don't know what project they're working on. Suddenly, they have hundreds of sets of stairs with orders to place them in secret locations. Maybe they used helicopters to put them in the deep, dark woods. Or the professor gets transferred to a new project. Or the general in charge gets sent to Alaska because he was caught with his hand in the cookie jar. Not his cookie jar, but somebody else's. The people doing the work don't know that the project is no longer needed, so they just keep going. What do we do with all these stairs, some worker asked. Place them in locations around the world, says his boss. But why, asks the worker. Orders, that's why, says the boss. And that's how our government works. This might explain the stairs to nowhere, but not the weird feelings or the creatures encountered. Really, there is no explanation that can cover all of these reports. This leads me to believe there is more than one explanation. You're out hiking in the woods and accidentally step through a portal. You encounter a small part of another dimension where... Just the staircase is visible to you. Why just the staircase? I don't know. Maybe being made from wood, they're able to slip through from one dimension to another more easily than maybe the rest of the house. Perhaps if you linger, the entire house might become visible. Uh, being in between dimensions, you feel odd sensations that make you scared or uneasy depending on its intensity. Sounds are slipping through the portal, but only in bits and pieces, so they become jumbled and indecipherable. Other stairs to Norway, <laughs> Norway, nowhere, are being placed. I'm not suggesting that Norway is nowhere. They just sound a lot alike. Other stairs to nowhere are being placed by aliens with some alien agenda that makes no sense to us humans. Too many people try to ascribe human thought process to alien beings. Why does my dog bark at my neighbors but not at the mailman? Uh, something inside her head is working at a level that I'm not aware of. Maybe my neighbors are evil. Maybe the mailman is really nice. I don't know. Or maybe she just likes the mailman. On a bit of a stretch, how about maybe there is some otherworldly being like, oh, say, Saurus from Galaxy Quest. He has total power and a few cards are missing. No one ever considers the possibility of aliens having mental issues. He orders his men to put some stairs on Earth so they can use them to descend from their spacecraft once the big invasion begins. The other aliens are all scared of him, so they do as told, which leads to people finding stairs in the weirdest locations. Meanwhile, Saurus forgets his orders and he goes off looking for the Thermians. There's no explanation for stairs to nowhere. It is just a mystery, or maybe we're really being played a few thousand hoaxers. This doesn't explain the weird feelings or sounds unless these hoaxers are well-equipped and financially able. Perhaps it is all just a story from Creepypasta. The only way I will ever know is if I ever do find a set of stairs and if I ever convince myself it would be a good idea to wander on up to the top or bottom, depending on how the stairs sit. Since I don't drink or do drugs, I probably won't go up the stairs. If you enjoyed tonight's show, if you did, 
Tell your neighbors, tell your friends, tell the mailman. They should be listening to Strange Things with Chris James. If you have any good or bad UFO stories that you'd like to see in print, you can send them to me at strangethings at arcanasa.com, and I'll put them in my next book. I am supposed to be speaking at the UFO Con in Jefferson, Texas, September 17th, if that's a Saturday. I keep looking at the schedule, and then I keep forgetting what the day. I better not forget and show up Sunday morning. Uh, Craig Woolheater will be somewhat upset. Somewhat. If you'd like to support the show, you can buy one of my books. You can pick up the Laredo Paranormal Research Society, Fort McIntosh and the Paranormal, Paranormal Stories or Paranormal Laredo at Amazon.com. And they still have a few copies at Organic Man Coffee Strike. Till next Saturday, this is Chris James for Strange Things. And I'm running a bit short on time. Well, actually, I'm running under time. So, till next Saturday. Are you, are you coming to the tree where they strung up a man who they say he murdered three? Strange things have happened there. No stranger would it be if we met at midnight in the hanging tree. <laughs>